Hi, I'm Sophie and welcome to episode 43 of The Link Building Show. Today I'm here with Molly and we're going to talk about using Twitter in digital PR. So Molly, is there a big audience for PR on Twitter? Yes, I would say so. I, I'm often on Twitter trying to get inspiration from people in our industry because people are very open about sharing their stuff on Twitter. There are honestly loads of people I could recommend people to follow um, just because they spend a lot of time and effort, which is greatly appreciated by me and I'm sure others, um, sharing their content, just sharing tips and tricks, um, which is a really nice aspect of our industry. So how would you use Twitter to find inspiration? So I was when I first started up my Twitter I just made sure that because I have a personal Twitter but I made a PR Twitter so that it would you know follow it would track what I was looking for and then try and give me some insights into who was out there and the types of pages I should be following you know like the algorithm and mm -hmm. stuff like that but you can obviously just type in PR Twitter PR digital PR and just see the kind of things that had loads of followers so there's um pages that share examples of campaigns that we can take inspiration from. There's people on Twitter who like to share their own pieces or mm. their team's pieces, which is nice to see. And then there's also other digital PR agencies, which mm. is just nice to get a feel for what they're up to. Um, and also, I just think it's nice as somebody who likes to you know, be connected to other people, I think it's nice to celebrate what others are doing. So even if they're not on your team, they're not in your company, it's just mm. nice to um, interact with people to celebrate their successes. Yeah, so outside of people who work in PR and companies and such, do you follow publications and like news outlets as well? Is it somewhere that you can find if there's a news story that you could react to? Is that something you'd like to keep all in one place on your Twitter? So for that I use TweetDeck because in order to find inspiration I can put all different kind of topics on my TweetDeck and then see it all in one um, page. So for example I could follow Showbiz publications or you can just follow like the news BBC news or mm -hmm. any American news channels just so that that's all popping up in real time if there's a breaking news story or you know for example if Love Island was on the night before mm -hmm. you can see what's trending about that the next morning. Yeah that sounds really good. Outside of looking for inspiration do you think it's important to engage with the people that work in the industry and kind of build your network online? Yes I would say it definitely is just because you could be, obviously you have your team and your company to get some insights, but if you're just starting out, there may be people who could share something you've never even thought of, which is really beneficial to you, and then you could share something back to make it you know, mm. nice and interactive. So I think it's just nice to build up a list of connections, to have that wider sense of community and the insights that they can share with you. Mm. And I think it's nice when someone's gone out of their way to make something educational or mm. to help other people in the industry, it's nice to say thank you, however yeah. simple that sounds. Because a lot of people, when they engage with something online, they'll just take whatever content or information it is and just, you know, use it and yeah. absorb it. But it's so nice to get someone just saying thank you. Yeah, um, definitely. And I think that's a good way to get your name known in the industry as well. And then that can also encourage them, you know, to continue sharing stuff because there's mm. nothing worse than spending a lot of time making something for other people to take insight from and then it gets no engagement for example yeah. and then they might be discouraged from doing that in the future yeah so it's nice to just you know give it that like or give it that comment and share because um, you would want that for yourself as well. yeah right? absolutely so just going back to that point on community do you think Twitter's a good place to build that in a less kind of formal like network sense than say you see on LinkedIn which is obviously beneficial in a different way but I suppose it's more informal yeah I see what you mean I think from my personal experience it's slightly more casual because mm. people are more like you say on LinkedIn is a great way of networking but you put your extremely professional side on yeah. there don't you so on Twitter I would encourage the professional side but people are a bit more light-hearted and mm. fun because you just yeah. you know you comment loads of like emojis or yeah. <laughs> just like the um, light-hearted and wholesome side mm. of it so yeah I think it's really nice it's kind of more of like a how to make friends in the industry yeah. way yeah it's more of a maybe not full-on friendship but a more informal relationship than yeah. if you were networking on LinkedIn. I think on sites like Twitter people are more likely to show their personality as well yeah. and like you even look at just the profile pictures people use on LinkedIn they're very formal headshots yes true. but um, on Twitter you can go with something a bit more fun yeah and really see more of who that person is yeah definitely and people probably talk more about their own interests on mm. Twitter than they would on LinkedIn because you're sharing the success of your pieces for example on LinkedIn mm -hmm. but on Twitter you could you and then you can also use it to reach out to people if you need something from them like insights yeah. and stuff if you want to ask oh do you have this do you have this data mm. people are more likely to respond so how do you use your professional twitter in a way that's different to your personal twitter other than the ways we've already discussed 
So, for example, on my personal Twitter, obviously it's just about my likes and interests, mm. so when I like something, it just goes, you know, into that section of likes. Yeah. But for my PR Twitter, I actually use that as a bank. Mm. So, for example, everything I like, I can then go back and think, oh, I need to use that in the future, or this is giving me another piece of inspiration, or if there's any threads, because some people do something that's really helpful where they put in loads of links to tools in the mm. digital PR world that would be helpful, that perhaps you don't see because they're not the obvious ones. So I could like that and then, you know, have that as a list, basically a list of things that I can mm. use, so I can just go back and I can also share it with the team so I can put them into Slack and things like that. Yeah, so it's an additional resource that you can go back to, whereas I think if you're using Twitter more socially, if you like something, you very rarely go back and look at it again. Yeah, exactly, it's um, just that spur of the moment thing. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, and I suppose you could do that with other people as well, so if there's someone who's just got a link on a website you're really interested in, uh, you could go back and look at their likes and see if they're using that feature in the same way. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And then you can also see, because if I'm using mine as a bank, other people might be using theirs as a bank, so Absolutely. we can see resources. That sounds a bit sneaky, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> see all their resources too in that. Yeah. yeah, but I suppose that's what it's for. If, they're, if they've built up this bank of resources, yeah. I don't think they'd find it sneaky if you did <laughs> as well. <laughs> yes, true. So thank you so much, Molly, for being on this episode with me. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.